Welcome back, my friends, to another Luminous Mysteries. Um, I don't think I have told you guys my name. My name's Tom. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, four videos in or five videos in, I haven't said my name. Uh, it just occurred to me. Anyway, today we got a really cool, uh, uh, cool reflection. Um, we're starting out in 1 Peter 5, 1 through 4, and then we're going to Matthew 16, 13 through 19, you know, classic. So... We're going to look a little deeper through the classic and uh, try to discern what the words mean behind what they mean. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, so uh, 1 Peter 5, 1 through 4. To the elders and the flock, to the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you know who, you will receive the crown of glory. That will never fade away. So that's uh, it's hard hitting right there. So we're gonna go to follow it up with Matthew sixteen. And Peter declares Jesus the Messiah. When Jesus came down to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, "Who do people say that the Son of Man is?" They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, well, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood. Remember, Jesus is flesh and blood but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of death will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will, will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. So automatically, the, the first thing that comes to mind is okay jesus jesus is standing in the flesh and he's telling peter i didn't tell you this this came from within the father the father within right your inner your inner connection to god that small quiet voice is what told peter hey i kind of like this guy he's my son you know so automatically you know that we're we're, we're going to be talking about what is within a person and Peter in his letter goes goes and, and says, hey, you guys are examples because you you were taught by Jesus and by us about how to how to find the father within you. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read what I wrote earlier today. I know it's kind of a little boring, but I'm trying to, you know, spice it up. You know, we're we're all learning together here. <laughs> but I like to I, I sometimes I. uh You'll see, I'll kind of highlight, you know, some of the words that really stuck out to me, you know, because sometimes when you read something, you, you know, you, that light goes off in your head and you go, hey, pay attention. So, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Peter blurts out, you are the Christ, Son of the living God. Remember, we know Peter's pretty, pretty energetic. So, you know, he's, he's a pretty cool guy. I like him. Again, my brothers and sisters, we need to look beyond the surface of the words and look at the message that God is teaching us. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Once you identify that Jesus is Christ and he is the Son of God, on that foundation your faith is built. Jesus is the stone rejected, remember. Truth rejected by the world. That foundation is where Jesus chooses to build his, church, his universal church. On the truth revealed in your heart. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, 
it was not your knowledge of the word world that you came to the belief that Jesus is the Son of God, but it is the divine light of God, which is the truth, that revealed this to your heart. No one can go to a person and just tell them that Jesus is the Son of God. You, know, you can, you, you know, if you've been around a while, you, you've you've seen the reactions of people that do that. No one can, uh, sorry, I lost my place. Jesus is, uh, okay, no one can go to a person and tell them that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is God and God is in him, that Jesus is one with God because God made flesh. That person would openly reject your fa- to your face, but it is God's grace and love that opens a heart to the truth that is the Christ. Once that truth is set firmly in your heart, Jesus begins to build his church within you. As you learn and grow in your faith, the church grows in your heart. Once you come to a full understanding and a complete trust in the Lord God, that the tr- that is when the church is finished. The gates of the ne- ne- nether world will not prevail against you. Your, f- your faith will be solid like a rock wall. There will be no temptation of the world that could separate you from the love of God. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. With a completed church within your heart, the tabernacle of the Lord is opened, and Jesus will come and fill his church with his glory for all the days of your life. Heaven will come with him, and you will be filled with the love of heaven. Your cup will overflow. Your enemies, your temptations, will see you feasting at the Lord's table of love. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever things you tie yourself to will hold you back in heaven. Whatever things you let go on earth will free you in heaven. Look within at the things that are holding you back, the things you just cannot do without. I love my coffee in the morning, but I could give up that coffee if it meant I could fully experience the glory of God's love. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Bye-bye, coffee. That action of being willing to give up what you love for the love of God means you are freed from the deadly desires because you choose the eternal living love of our Creator. We are a church of priests. Some of us take on holy orders, but all of us are called to be ministers of God's love on earth. Peter says today that he is a priest among priests. He calls his priests to tend the flock not out of obligation, but out of love for God and God's children. Peter is calling to his priests to be guides, not administrators. A guide doesn't spend his time tending to the business and money. A guide spends his time doing, guiding the lost back into the path to completing the church that Jesus is building in that heart. A true guide does his work because he is asked by God to do the work. That work doesn't need any profit aside from the love and blessings that flow from God's love for a humble servant of his. And when that guide is called home, they will get to meet Lord Jesus, the chief shepherd, in his glory. That guide will also receive his just rewards. A share with a crown of glory placed on their head. The light and love of God always shining down upon that blessed servant. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty hard hitting one today, but it it's it's a call to your heart. It's a call to open your heart and and let Jesus be that first stone because when you accept through your faith that is revealed from the small voice within you calling to God, when when you you accept that, that's when you start building the faith of the church within your heart. That, that faith solidifies, and as that solidifies, you get more and more confident in standing in the Lord's love and doing the Lord's work, the, the work that you're called to. I mean, I could have never have guessed I'd be making videos talking about God's love even even five years ago. But 20 years ago, oh, heck no. I was openly, openly rebelling against the, the faith of the church. And, you know, I was... Looking back, I was so filled with darkness because I was so tied to all the things that I loved and loving myself over everyone else uh, to my own detriment. So it was only the through the f- grace and the love of God that, you know, I'm here today even talking to you. So 
I know that church is being built within me. I don't know if it's built yet, you know. <laughs> I think we all we all always have room to grow. And there's always there's you know, once the church is built, there's always adornments to put on the inside. Especially if you're an old lady. <laughs> they they love hanging stuff on the walls, right? So let God's call in your heart stir you into action because you remember that was the whole theme of last week and i've i've written on this 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 passage writ that we shared in mark i think two weeks ago if i remember correctly and i kind of wrote something a little different but you know it's it's a matter of what the gospel is speaking to you because every time you read this book you're at a different place in your life so different words and different teachings are going to speak to you in different ways. The different different things are going to stick out to you because this is God's word guiding you, guiding you to greater holiness, greater love, greater fullness in God. Because God wants you to be with him completely before we die. So I appreciate your time with me. I love spending this with you. Um like, subscribe, you know, all that happy YouTube stuff. But if you're getting something out of this, share it with somebody that you think you might, that might need to hear something from this. Because it's it's through sharing each other's spiritual strengths and experiences with God that motivate each other to to grow together, to grow in love with God, and to become the saints that we're meant to become yes you you're meant to become a saint that's why we're here I, if anybody knows me they know that i've been saying this for probably at least a year now this is a saint factory and you know in factories sometimes you start out with a raw piece of material and everything's cut away except for like michelangelo he started out with a big block of granite and someone said, how do you how do you make such beautiful carvings? And he said, I just chip away everything that's not the thing that I'm making. And that's what happens in a factory. And that's what happens here. God chips away all the things that don't bear fruit. Right. He, he trims that vine. So let God work within you. And I love you and have a wonderful day.